the matter, Brad? It, it's Monday. Yeah, it sure is. Mm-hmm. We woke up to uh, what I would call a dusting of snow. Yeah. And uh, obviously that triggered a two-hour delay of my daughter's school because, God forbid, tire, snow get on anyone's tires. Or as we would call it in Seattle, national news. <laughs> yes, Seattle apparently has a lot of snow. And I assume... Well, Seattle that, has what I would call a normal amount of snow. Yeah. But <laughs> apparently, I don't know. Somebody described it. They said, we have one and a half snow plows. I don't know what right, the half is. Right. But probably some. It's probably someone's car with a thing on yeah. the front of it. You know, I think um, uh, when you look at the winners and losers in the climate change sweepstakes, uh, Seattle's going to be a loser. Yeah, uh, that's but that's what the weather has been showing us. And that's too bad because before this happened, Seattle was kind of a winner from a climate perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the weather's impacting our connection because you just. Yeah, you know. I just flitted out. Yeah, I yeah. did get a dusting of snow, like I said. <laughs> I tested my connection the other day for some reason. I don't remember what it was. And it was actually exactly what I'm supposed to get for the first time ever. Yeah. And right now it looks like it's a 14.4 modem or something, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, you use Do all I that sound bandwidth. okay? It's a, is the sound Yeah, it sounds fine. fine. Yeah. I mean, you sound fine. You, you Like I said, you used to sound robotic there, but... Uh, yeah, you're getting seven, maybe eight pixels across, but maybe, maybe it'll come back. <laughs> Maybe it will. Is it good enough to see this? No. <laughs> it is good enough to see whatever, whatever this, this is. is yeah. So Alex Kipman this morning up on, on the Twitters and the YouTubes tweeted out this video, which is kind mm -hmm. of a teaser. Um, most of us believe this is like some sort of AI chip or their next ho gen holographic unit processing power thing with a video ending of a date of February 24th, which is right when their Mobile World Congress thing is. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I, if I could give any advice to the Microsoft hardware guys, it would be to stop making videos like this. I, I get that you want to drum up excitement. I also get that you don't want to reveal anything about this thing ahead of the announcement. But this reminds me of those, like the magnesium material mm -hmm. ads they used to do for Surface back when it was brand new. And, it's just not, it's just not, it just doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything for you? Nothing? Nope. <laughs> no, I just, I think it's terrible. Well, Paul's so happy. So happy on a Monday. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I am incredibly happy about other things. Yeah. You know, like the photo stuff has been awesome. Like this morning I uploaded my <laughs> photos to, to OneDrive. No, I mean, you don't understand, dude. I, I have like years of our lives that were just missing yeah. up in storage, you know, like for, from a photo perspective and they've, they've been filled in. Like it's, um, you feel more it's really gratifying now? to see that. What's that? You feel more complete. I do feel more complete. I honestly, I don't know how memory works exactly. I don't know what your memory is like, or if you have good memory, you know, like a good memory yeah. of the past. Uh, I really feel like with myself in particular, I need these kind of visual triggers. Um, and then I have, I, it's, it's probably doesn't make any sense, but I, I feel like I have stronger memories of times where I have photos that I remember and I mm -hmm. can access, you know, and there were certain photos from certain things that my wife and I did over the years that have just been out and about. And so those events are very clear in my mind. And then there are the photos, some of the photos that I just scanned that are from events that, yeah, I mean, obviously we did and it's like they've surfaced for the first time and I, I don't, I kind of don't remember them. Like we went camping a lot. I don't remember that. I remember a couple of them, you know, but there are literally like events. I, I'm, I'm looking at the pictures and I'm like, there we are. And I, and yeah. I don't remember this. It's weird. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, HoloLens uh, V2. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're teasing that now. Sure. Although if you're a consumer, I would keep your hopes modestly in check that you'll ever want to buy one of these. I'm not saying that it's not a good device. I'm saying that it's probably still going to be expensive. And this isn't something you're going to walk up in. I mean, realistically, if the mixed reality headsets are the low end around 300 bucks, unless they're on sale, th there's no way this thing is anywhere close to that price point. And there you go. What was the first one? About three grand? That was like 30, that? Well, no, I think it was five grand. Even but then five they had, grand, okay. They had them on sale at one point where you can get them, I think, like two of them for 3,500 bucks 
but then this isn't um, it's not like an impulse buy you know like you're standing yeah. in line at the microsoft store and you're like oh look there's a hololens i think i'll grab one of those too um and it's i don't think it's ever going to be uh, i think your comment about mixed reality is interesting because there are actually even more expensive versions of that and i mm -hmm. i think that product line gets improved over time and and kind of fills the gap between the the real consumer cheapo yep. stuff and hololens but i i would be I, I, I refuse to believe there's going to be any consumer application for HoloLens in this new generation. It's these vertical markets that they've mm -hmm. seen great success in. It makes sense for the product. It's the only reason it exists, really. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be that. You know. It, so if you're looking for something you're going to be wearing around the house, this this is not it. Yeah. The only, <clears throat> I mean, we I very much think we'll eventually get there. Not with this generation, but um, eventually. No. The the biggest way I see something like this impacting the consumer is like you walk into a showroom somewhere and that company whatever puts one on your head and be like this is what your house could look like with all this stuff and like that but that again that's a commercial application for it not a yep. yeah not like the lowest thing um which i don't know if this is a broadly available thing any or whatever but you know, remember Lowe's at least experimented with this yep. you could go into the store kind of that, that kind of thing yep i Honestly, that kind of thing is a good use for AR, MR, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. You could do that on your phone. I think there are apps like that. You, yeah. uh, you know, download a piece of furniture essentially, mm -hmm. and you can place it in real time in your room and and see it through your, you know, typically through yeah. a, a smartphone thing. It's that's fine. You know, that's yeah. it's a neat way to do that. I mean, and and you know, again, it's not something you use every day, but it's mm -hmm. it's a, it's a nice thing to have. Yeah, and uh, kind of building on that, uh, Google announced what uh well they i don't know if they announced it but they showed it off to the wall street journal it's essentially ar based navigation which to me is really yeah. interesting primarily but i don't know if it's gonna have the same impact one of the things in my opinion that made the smartphone so pervasive was the ability for navigation you could have maps on your phone mm -hmm. that could help you get around like it really solved a problem and so what Google has announced is that you can now hold your phone up in front of your face and it will actually like put big giant arrows and make it much easier to walk around the city, which is neat. Yep. And I'll be curious to see if that ever becomes the killer application for use of AR. Uh, obviously, you can see how that can turn into a headset related thing. But yeah. Yeah. I, there's precedent for this type of app. You, you probably remember, I think it was called Nokia City Lens was yeah. kind of an AR. Mm hmm um, overlay to what you were looking at through the camera and it, it wasn't for directions but but what you could do is you would arrive at some location like a you can imagine a city square or a street or whatever and then you would hold up the camera as you and kind of spin around and it would give you the names of the stores and the restaurants and uh, if you wanted to find something that was a little further away it would, it would be there but it'd be smaller and you could kind of get the, the vague mm -hmm. idea you had to walk in that direction and yeah, I, it, even that is incredibly useful um, I think the other great use of AR is going to be that Google style um, real time language translation, right? Same yeah. thing. You can hold it up to be in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. It's they've got a character based language that makes no sense to someone from the Western world, and you can hold your camera up and, and it will translate the sign or yep. a menu or what you know subway signs. You can imagine all the the places you might use such a thing. It's 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 just that's yeah. transformative. You know, that yeah. stuff's great. It is. It's all there. It's all, or it's all getting there. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to come down to somebody being able to put that into a, a package that it has to fit multiple criteria. One, it has to look non-dumb, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. that description is to <laughs> <Yep>. you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> uh, it has to be a right price point, right? Mm -hmm. It can't be, it can't be non-dumb in $7,000. Right. And then at the same time, it has to be very easy to use. Yeah. You're just you've described approximately zero consumer electronics devices, but right. yes, it, it it right ideally it has to be all those things. Um, yeah, I mean we're, this is early days. It's like everything. A lot of things we talk about. Um, <laughs> there goes the vacuum. Sorry, we try to avoid this. Um, well, it's only it's sucking up all your pixels. Yeah, it's just it's all my photographs are going down the tube. But um, <laughs> seriously, they've already okay. Anyway, um, I've lost track. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, smart home equipment, it's, it's stuff, it's kind of an add-on. A lot of this um, stuff that we would call a wearable today will mm. eventually be something that's inserted or embedded into your body in small chip forms, you know. Um, we already, we do this stuff, you know, like you, if you have an animal, you probably have this in your animal as a, um, like a little chip they insert into its skin. Yeah. Which is like a tracking chip, so if it ever gets mm -hmm. out and 
gets lost or one of your neighbors steals it or whatever, um, you can actually like go to the police and find it. You know, um, even back, even when I was a little kid, I remember we got like a hardware uh, or a, um, something chiseled onto my bike, like a, a number of some kind. My bike was stolen and it was recovered uh, somewhere else in the town. And we were able to, cl- you know, prove that it was our bike cause we had that little, thing and these this is kind of like mm-hmm. the electronic version of that um it's just going to keep going you know it, it's it's incredible being alive at this time in many ways you know yeah it really is um i'll be curious to see how this stuff all plays out obviously and uh it'll eventually get there i mean google played around with the google glass so it, it would not surprise me to see a, a another version of that show up at mm-hmm. some point yep There'll be normal glasses that have that capability built mm-hmm. in that look normal. Uh, there'll be contact lenses. And eventually we'll be doing LASIK surgery. And <laughs> what you'll be getting in your eye isn't just a new cornea or whatever, however, whatever yeah. they do. I guess they slice your cornea or they, I think they shave it or something. But anyway, um, they'll be inserting little chips, you know. And won't that be weird if your eyes weren't itchy enough today? Yeah, well, you know, downloading a firmware to your eye. <laughs> yeah, is... I can't see it right now. I'm, I'm downloading an update. Hold on. It didn't respect my quiet hours. Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. Following that will be Skype on the eyeball, which will be my untimely death. It'll be the little, the little um, vibrating heart thing down in the corner that you can't turn off for some well, reason. Well, the great part will be is that you'll have one on each eye and they won't be in sync. So you'll have like exactly. unread messages yes. on this eye and not on that eye. It'll be. Oh, my God. I, I, this is a completely random story, but at some time in the late 80s, Larry Bird took a horrible fall. His head slammed into the court. He went off to the doctor back and came running back out, and everyone was really excited. And he got fouled, and he took foul shots, and he, he, he scored a bunch of points after that. But they asked him how he was doing, and he's like, I'm, he's like, I've been seeing triple ever since this accident. And they were like, really, how did you play basketball? And he said, I shot for the middle basket. <laughs> It's like that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah, that's hardcore. Wow. Well, I don't. I I hurt my fingernail today. I don't even want to type. Hurt. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it gets a little long and it gets caught on something, and then it's oh, like poor Paul. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Listen, the term the term hero is thrown around loosely these days, but <laughs> oh, you know, I typed seven thousand words on that hangnail. Yeah. Exactly. Right. All right. When are you going? You're going to New York. Is that tomorrow? Yeah. So we've kind of, uh, this is kind of a random thing, but we've been taking this thing called the Bieber bus line into New York from West Coast Village is the next town over from here. And um, this thing has been in business since 1946. And uh, they went out of business on Friday, Brad. And oh. um, yeah, that necessitated a little bit of scrambling. <laughs> so there are a couple of other companies that uh, also do this. Um, and there's one apparently that's going to pick up a lot of the Bieber routes. So we're taking uh, – my wife's going to come. We decided kind of last minute uh, we're going to stay overnight. So <clears throat> we'll you know, have dinner with Mary Jo or whatever and Andrew if he's around. And um, then I have a meeting tomorrow and I'll come back tomorrow. So uh, there's also a snowstorm happening. So mm-hmm. that's going to be fun. So we'll see how that works out. But our current plan is to go this afternoon. And we'll be there overnight. And then uh, the meeting's in the morning. And then come home – I don't know. We'll see what it looks like with the storm. You know, Sometimes. hopefully the bus is still there. Yeah. I think like a tall, top-heavy vehicle on an icy road. Is, I don't see the problem. I'm sure the winds will be low. And- yeah, the winds. Yeah, it's with the winds, right? <laughs> oh, my God. We'll just well, we look- go sideways right into Allentown. But, um, we look forward to doing your next podcast from a ditch on the side of whatever highway. Yeah. Actually, so I'm meeting these people at 11, so mm. we should maybe tomorrow we could either do it after that or earlier than that, I guess, obviously, it would be the two options. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that narrows it down. <laughs> yes. That absolutely yep. does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, whatever's, whatever's easier for you, I think. I mean, yeah. it takes me about five minutes to get set up and then about okay. seven minutes for Skype to figure out if we have enough bandwidth. Let me, let me see what's going on. And I'll, I, I mean, we'll talk in the morning so we can yeah. figure it out. All right. Well, for everybody, uh, I hope you have more bandwidth than Paul and I or whatever's going on between Skype and whatever. I'm assuming it's related to the snowstorm in Seattle that or whatever. Uh, Have yourselves a wonderful Monday. Hopefully you're warm, dry and uh, happy.